spring is in the air. You know what that means? The leaves are coming back on the trees. The weather's getting warmer. But most importantly, Kings Island opens within 30 days of this recording. Hello, everybody. Alongside Don Helbig, I'm Ryan Sir, and this is Tower Topics. <laughs> fans because that's who we are and that's who we care about so ryan opening day start of a new season what is it about opening day at king's island that gets you excited you know i, I think that there's a primal thing when it comes to the spring and the summer that everybody has from when they were a kid when school was going to be letting out and they were going to have nothing but free time on their hands and as a result of that you get like the super excitement about anything that has to do with summer, whether, you know, for people like you, it's Red's opening day. And for you and everybody else, it's the theme parks opening up. But I think that it symbolizes the best time of the year. And that is what's the most exciting thing for me. Don, if you were going to visit Kings Island this year, what would make you most excited? You know, what really gets me excited uh, every year about opening day, and this goes back to my season pass days, it wasn't always, you know, the big new toy that they were opening. Uh, you know, I always looked at those attractions as kind of silver. And then for me, the gold was the favorites, the, the rides I grew up with, you know, riding the racer for the first time of the season, the beast, uh, the carousel, the train. So those are the kind of things that got me excited was just the anticipation uh, for, for going back and seeing old friends. Yeah. And then there's literally seeing old friends, too. There, I, I've done a lot better recently in the past five or so years of keeping keeping contact with people mm -hmm. that are just Kings Island friends and making them year round friends. Um, right. But there's still a lot of people that I really enjoy talking to and seeing in the park, and I don't see them between you know December 31st and April 20th of this year. So that that's going to be exciting for you too, because it's probably um, a lot more for you as well, because you you know, I mean, Kings Island does. Uh, three and a half ish million people a year so you know approximately 3.1 million of them so uh you can't talk to all of them <laughs> no you can't but you know ryan when do you start to really get excited you know it's it's a long winter you know now the winter fest you know, takes place you got to the end of december but you know you got january february long cold months but when does the juices start to flow for you um so to, to it, my, my my answer has changed throughout history because it used to be when the park closed on you know october 30th november 1st around then um the next day i would start look i mean they didn't have webcams back then necessarily but i would start thinking about the park and counting down the days and just wishing the park would have been open for one more weekend nowadays with the park being open through the end of the year i'm i actually kind of welcome the break a little bit to be honest with you but uh, nowadays, to me, I start really thinking about the park and being like, eh, I miss that place. I kind of want to go back um, right around the time when you well, first of all, when the weather gets warm, the first warm day makes me think of like, this would be a good day to visit the park. But also like on the park social media, you often see, uh, you know, hey, the the racer is back on his track or the vortex is back on its track, you know, whatever. And that sort of stuff is what's getting me excited because that makes it real at that point. So, Ryan, let's say it's uh, opening day, mm -hmm. or maybe you go to the season pass preview the night before. You come through the gates. What's the first thing that you do? So, I'm not going to lie. Uh, the first thing that I typically do is try the new food option, because that's usually uh, been a thing the past couple of years, where it's either a new dish that they're advertising or a whole new restaurant or something. I usually go there, to be completely honest with you. Um I, I want to say ride-wise, because that's probably the answer that most people are looking for. I, I think I start most of my seasons on Diamondback. For you, it's Racer. Spoiler alert. Right? No, actually, it's not. <laughs> um, you know, it was in the 80s, you know, and, and you know, going into the, the early 90s, it would be. But it started to become the Grand Carousel. As the really? Place, right? You know, I, I would go past the Eiffel Tower and, you know, there it is. And I would want to take a spin on the carousel to get started. And then maybe I'd walk over and uh, take a ride on the KI and Miami Valley Railroad. Then I'd make my way over to the racer and get the first ride of the year on that. That's been, like I said, the past 15, 20 years, that would be my routine. So, Don, the times that you were a season pass holder, did they have season pass preview days or is that uh, more recent? That's more recent. Uh, you know, the park would open and 
that would be the opening day. There weren't any, you know, back then, I mean, the pass holders today, they have no idea how good they have it. Uh, there wasn't free parking. So I had to pay mm-hmm. to park every single visit. Now it wasn't 30 bucks, whatever it is today, but it was still, you know, dollar fifty, two dollars, then up to three dollars by the time, you know, 1990 hit. Uh, there was not early ride time. So you never had any of those uh, benefits like that. There was not fast lane. So there was no way to enhance the ride numbers by having the opportunity to purchase either single day fast lane or the all season fast lane. Uh, there mm-hmm. wasn't a training plan. You couldn't take advantage of, of any of those kind of things. Uh, there were no, like I said, preview nights for pass holders. You know, nothing like that. It was just basically what, what a pass did for you then. It was just an admission ticket that got you in every day. You know, that's how you looked at it back then. So a uh, different world today for pass holders than it was, you know, back in the day when I was visiting the park with a high degree of frequency. Yeah, I, I agree. And honestly, um, and this is kind of a weird statement because I, I don't want to come across as unappreciative, but I do want to be uh, very distinct with the way that I feel about this. But I almost feel like the season pass preview day uh, almost diminishes opening day for me. Because to me, opening day isn't Saturday, April 20th. It's Friday, February 19th. You know, so it's um, by the time the next day rolls around, it's not the first day of the season anymore. I guess it would be kind of like, um, I I know in the past, uh, and and maybe you can tell me whether or not they do this more often, but I went to uh, the first ever game at Great American Ballpark. It wasn't the first day or the first game. I I think they played the Pirates the first game. You probably know this offhand. But I saw them play the Cleveland Indians, now Guardians, in a preseason game uh, about three days before the ballpark opened to the public. I don't know why they did a preseason game. Maybe it's because the stadium was new. But nonetheless, when opening day rolled around, everybody was so excited. And to me, it was old hat. I'd already been there. Mm -hmm. Um, So I'm not like making a case against preview days or anything like that. But it is kind of funny how we would be given opening because I remember like under Paramount and and like that, like by the time the season ended, they wouldn't have the calendar out, but they would tell you what opening day was. So you knew like where to count down and so on. Um, so it's, uh, it, it's interesting to think that to many people and probably a huge population that is going to be there on Saturday, April 20th, uh, that's not opening day. That's the second day the parks open, you know, Am I rambling think, or am I making sense? No, no. The other thing about it too is, you know, back when I was a, I mean, I was season pass, or I think it was like my number was 10,882 on my season pass, you know, in 1981. Yeah. So now there's hundreds of thousands of season pass holders. So used to be a, you know, 30%, 33% was pass holders on a given day, 33, 35% were just single day tickets. The rest were group sales. Now the percentages are very high in the season pass favor on that. So, um, you know, even opening day, it still feels the same, you know, on a pass order night, because the next day it's going to be mostly pass holders anyway, too, right? I assume that the mix on opening day is, because uh, I can tell you that if I was going to go to Kennywood, and buy a ticket, I'd probably avoid opening day because A, it's probably a decent crowd and B, it's not employees at their best because it's most of their first days, you know? So yeah, yeah, I imagine the season pass mix is pretty high that day. The other thing, if the weather's not perfect, you know, we're Mm -hmm. not in the low eighties or, you know, sun's not shining. Opening day a lot of times can be one of the better Saturdays of the year to go because once you get to Memorial Day, the crowds on Saturdays, you know, only become busier. And then you get into the fall with the Halloween season, you know, then it gets crazy busy on those days. So for me, I was never someone that was going to shy away from going on opening day because I knew that as we got deeper into the season on those Saturdays, that it was only going to get busier. So I was never, you know, worried that opening day was going to be slammed and packed. And uh, it wasn't like that. It never really, I mean, it's, it's good numbers. Yeah. It's, it's, it's crowded, but it's not like it's going to be later in the season. No, I agree. And, and honestly, like I, I wouldn't shy away from opening day for that reason. I'm I'm saying like if I was going to buy a ticket to another park, like me personally, maybe. But that, but but to be clear about the weather, I can't think of a time when we've really had bad weather for past preview day or opening day in the last decade or so. I remember when Paramount opened like at the end of March, it would snow every once in a while, which was kind of fun. But um, yeah, the, I remember the being there opening day in, in the early 90s and it did snow. 
Yeah. Um, but uh, so one of the things that uh, I I really do like, and this is kind of funny because it's also my, one of my biggest complaints, but it's something I kind of appreciate on the side is that since things are kind of working out the way they are with show openings staggering, uh, to me, it's almost like something to look forward to for months on end. So you look forward to opening day and then you get to enjoy the rides for a few weeks. And then Memorial Day, a lot of the shows open. So it's something to look forward to then. And then in mid-June, you usually have like the show place show open. And this year it's going to be, uh, you know, late June is the the gazillion bubble show. So I, I think that's that's kind of cool that uh, you have stuff to look forward to the whole time. Uh, and then, of course, once you get into the root of things, you've got the grand carnivals and the winter fest and the Halloween haunts and so on. But um, that's one thing that I always thought was really cool about Kings Island, especially um, when you guys were firing all cylinders back when, like, you know, the marketing department wasn't over in in Charlotte. But like there was always something very closely on the horizon to look forward to. You know, we talked about uh, the the major league eating. Somebody in the comments mentioned the ASA uh, Sports World Tour. Remember that one? They had the half pipes. Oh yeah, well. that was a, a lot of fun, and uh, you know, the crowd, the, the you know, the guests, they just absolutely loved that show. Yeah, and, and I'll stand by it. You know, when it comes down to it, I, I don't care what new ride is added if it's only a piece of the puzzle. Because the two years that I think were the best years, Kings Island at their finest, were number one was 2022 that season will probably never be eclipsed in my lifetime and number two is 2008 because you guys tried the hardest robbie knievel uh walinda uh, you know just, just something brady every bunch. few weeks so, yeah the brady bunch uh, every rose. few weeks there's something to look forward to yeah we got a request to, for us to talk about when pete rose came to town so keep that in your pocket uh yeah but so, we'll talk yeah, about I, that for sure but you know that 2008 season there wasn't anything new at all. We're not, we're talking, you know, even the food items, nothing really new. Uh, mm -hmm. The biggest addition that year was twice the number of trash cans in the park. Hey, there were some fine trash cans though. Yeah. But that was my presentation when I went to the uh, a snow coaster con in January was that was my teaser video. Here's what's new this year. And it was twice the number of trash cans. The park needed that, you know, they got back to the Taft days where, you know, cleanliness was, was high priority. Uh, but that's what we had news. So as a marketing team, uh, we were challenged to come up with as many events as we could, just you know, giving people a reason to come. And you know, it, it was one of like the most rewarding year, you know, maybe of, of my career uh, there because we made a lot out of nothing to work with that summer. Yeah, as our friend Bill Mepper would say, it was a PR dream. Exactly. Um, that sounded like so. Mepper. Yeah. So. Would you like, obviously, like you don't have these numbers in front of you and stuff, but would you say that, you know, all the events, because there's a lot of expense that goes into these events. That's still cheaper than a cheap flat ride, I bet. Well, I can't say a cheap flat ride because you can get one for like a hundred grand, but it was, this was definitely a lot of effort and not a lot of, a, a lot of juice for not a lot of squeeze. Let's put it that way. It was uh money well spent. And yes. every time that there would become money available, it was given to the marketing department that year to go find something to do with it. And that's how we ended up bringing in the Brady Bunch uh, that mm -hmm. year over Labor Day weekend because there was money left over. And I had been pleading, you know, since I got there in 2017, so for about, you know, 15 months, got to bring in the Brady Bunch. Finally, it was like, okay, we got some extra money, you know, reach out and see if you can bring them in. So that was, the, like I said, a fun year, but you're right. It doesn't have to be about, uh, you know, always a new ride, you know, every year. You know, a lot of times you have people, if there's not a new roller coaster, I'm not buying a new season pass this year. Uh, but it's a much bigger picture than one, you know, individual ride at the park or one new uh, big roller coaster every year. Uh, there's those memories, those rides that mean a lot to you. Like for me, the racer and the beast, you know, I, I you know, I enjoy riding those rides. And if they never put in a new roller coaster for the rest of my life, I'm okay. As long as those two rides are there. Yeah, honestly, if it was, if you told me that, you know, they're they're gonna they're they're pivoting away from rides and they're gonna do 2008 style stuff where there's just a lot of stuff going on, I'd be pretty excited about that. So oh, yeah. let me ask, l l let's ask the audience. So uh, tweet us at uh, Tower underscore Topics or leave a comment on this video and tell us what year do you think was Kings Island at its finest? What year did you have the most fun? What year do you think that Kings Island showcased its best and why? 
I'd love to hear your opinion on that. Um, now, you know, Ryan, everyone's going to tweet at us about Dinosaurs Alive. I think Dinosaurs Alive was terribly underrated. I think it was it unique. Was. It yeah. was. It was, uh, you know, it was one of those attractions that separated Kings Island from, from other parks at that time. It was, it was it was good enough to be a standalone attraction. Mm -hmm. You know, so that if that had been up the road in Westchester, Ohio, it would have done well just on its own. Uh, but to have that as part of the park experience, you're right. It was unique, um, just a great opportunity, educational and highly underrated. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, I, I, I agree. I, I think I, it was educational. I think the effort put into it in 2011 when it was originally put in was really, really cool where they had the guides and stuff. We have a whole episode on Dinosaurs Alive, so we can't dig too far into that. But um, I think that that was, I mean, just another example of, you know, Kings Island thinking outside the box and doing something where, like, what do you mean dinosaurs at Kings Island? Like, I, I, I think that that was really cool and it was a really cool showcase of... It, not to bring up Bill Mefford again, although I could talk about that man all day, but anytime that, that he, I ask him about like, what do you think of this person or whatever? You not necessarily like interpersonal, but like their work, it always starts off with, well, you know, they're willing to take risks or like, ugh, they won't take any risks. He, he starts, that's his starting point. And if that's, you've got to be willing to take point, risks. Yeah. I mean, if that's Mefford's starting point, then that should be our starting point as well, as far as, you know, how good or bad of a job is, is somebody doing in a lot of cases, but yeah, anybody can really do cool. the layups, but it's taking those risks. And when you do that, there's more reward for the effort. When, when you do go out on a limb and you find that the, the guest absolutely loved it, brought a lot of people to the park. I mean, there, there's nothing that beats that kind of feeling. Yeah, I completely agree. All right, let's move on to the listener question. So the listener question is from James L., very simple question, and I'm really interested in your answer to this. James L. asked, Coney Barbecue or the Brew House? Don, why don't you start? As much as I love Coney Barbecue, I'm going to go with the Brew House in Rivertown. I just think that, um, you know, the burgers that are in there, the pub burger, they had the the, what, the barbecue bacon burger. And those are off the charts good. So for me, if I had to pick one or the other, I'm going to go to the brew house and just the setting to be able to sit down indoors like that. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it, it's one of my favorite places to eat in the park. I think that Kings Island is terribly lacking in sit down restaurants that are indoors. And I think that they need another one that would take the pressure off of brew house because brew house does get very busy, but I, I agree. Coney barbecue is awesome. You, you picked that too. Okay. Yeah. Coney barbecue. Yeah, you're right. It's, it's great. But every time I go into the brew house, I know, what I'm getting, you know, in terms of, of the quality of what the burger is going to be, what the fries are going to be, what the tater tots are going to be, you know, there's just a lot of uh, consistency there. And I think it's in the whole industry. I think it's one of the most underrated restaurants out there. Yeah. I mean, honestly, one critique, I wish you could do fries instead of the, um, the tater, the tater tots, tots right? because by August, like the thought of tater tots just makes me want to puke because <laughs> I've had them so many times, but, uh, Dude, that pub burger, which is on the dining plan, or at least it was last year. I assume it's going to be this year. It's awesome. Um, th th it's always good. Every once in a while, you get some sort of prodigy cook back there, and they eat it, and you're like, I if I had paid $20 for this burger alone, I I'd be okay with that. You know? Like, yeah. like it's just, it's superb. It, it's also, honestly, sometimes the the uh, the tater tots are particularly good, too. Like they're, yeah. they're like super crispy and stuff. And and they do have a lot of really cool uh, dipping options. It's like the suriachi mayo. Uh, my girlfriend really likes that. I usually just do ranch, I think, or maybe barbecue sauce. Yeah, but the portion sizes too, you know, are very consistent. Yes. So whether you go in April, whether you go in August, the portion size are going to be the same. And, you know, I found a little inconsistency at Coney Barbecue. Yes. That sometimes, you know, there's a lot. And sometimes you get like two little strips, you know, mm -hmm. uh, of something. So I think for that reason, I'm going to lean toward uh, the Rivertown Brew House. But great question. Appreciate it, James. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's let's not end this question. What's your favorite food at at, uh, at Coney Barbecue then? I like the sausage that they had. Yes, very good. Yeah, I like the sausage too. 
Uh, my go-to is the pulled pork. I really like that. Um, the They don't always have shrimp. They just had it during Winterfest for a while, but it would make cameos during the regular season. But the shrimp is really, really good. Uh, the mac and cheese is the bomb. That's some of the best mac and cheese out there. Um, yeah, very cool. All right. So, uh, yeah, we're going to take... Uh, we're going to take brew house over crony barbecue. So, and hey. again, it's on the dining plan, but we also want to announce, uh, we had on our X tower underscore topics. Uh, we said repost for your chance to win a tower topics t-shirt. We were talking about opening day, you know, just being around the corner and randomly selected was David Ellis. So David, you'll be receiving that t-shirt in the mail in probably about 10 days. Awesome. Yeah. Congratulations. And um, like I said, if you want to, um, you know, follow us, that's not what I'm trying to show this one. Yeah. So uh, follow us on X at tower underscore topics, and you can be invited into, you know, fun little contests like this and, you know, possibly win a shirt. Uh, we will start selling the shirts. I had people immediately started asking about that, which we appreciate the enthusiasm, yeah. uh, getting some final things together, but super excited about that. Awesome. It'll be good. It, it it will be good. All right. Hey, I'm Ryan Sir, along with Don Helbig, and this is Tower Topics. <laughs>